Hey guys, today we are going to listen to How to Train Your Dragons by Cressida Cowell. This is book one. And just so you know, this is not like the movie. Yes, there are similar characters, but the story is very, very different. With that said, here we go. Whoops, went too far. Huh. About Hiccup. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III was an awful sword fighter, a dragon whisperer, and the greatest Viking hero that ever lived. But Hiccup's memoirs look back to when he was a very ordinary boy and finding it very hard to be a hero. If you don't have to read the Hiccup books in order, but if you would like to, this is the right order. The first one is How to Train Your Dragon, How to Be a Pirate, How to Speak Dragonese, How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse, How to Twist a Dragon's Tail, Here's um, Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons, How to Ride a Dragon's Storm, How to Break a Dragon's Heart, How to Steal a Dragon's Sword, How to Seize a Dragon's Jewel, and How to Betray a Dragon's Hero. Now, these are not all of the stories, but these are just the first 11. I think there's 15 now, but they are very, very, very good. And if you can have, if you have a chance to listen to them by um, the, the other person that reads this, besides myself, Mrs. Merritt, um, it's very, very entertaining. Or if you choose to read it by yourself, which I highly recommend, um, you can have your own voices read it to you and narrate it. How to Train Your Dragon. This is Hiccup. This is um, Speedy Fist, Dog's Breath, the Durbrain, Tough Nut Jr., Warthog. So these are some characters that you may not be familiar with, but this is what they look like. Novice of the Hairy Hooligan Tribe. Tribe is Clueless, um, Stoic the Vast, Fish Legs, Snotlout, as you can see by the engorged news, and Gobber the Belch. And let's continue. How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Cowell. So these are the chapters that we will be going through. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock the Third. A note from Hiccup. There were dragons when I was a boy. There were great, grim sky dragons that nested on the cliff tops like gigantic scary birds, little brown, scuttly dragons that hunt down the mice and rats in well-organized packs, preposterously uh, huge, sci sea, well, huge sea dragons that were 20 times as big as the big blue whale and who killed for the fun of it. Who, you will have to take my word for it, for the dragons are disappearing so fast, they may soon become extinct. Nobody knows what is happening. They are crawling back into the sea from whence they came, living, um, leaving not a bone nor a fang in the earth for the men of the future to remember them by. So in order for these amazing creatures should not be forgotten, I will tell this true story from my childhood. I will not, I, oh, I was not the sort of boy who could train a dragon with the mere lifting of an eyebrow. I was not a natural at the heroism business. I had to work at it. This is the story of becoming a hero the hard way. Chapter one, first catch. First catch your dragon. Long ago, on the wild and windy isle of, Br of Burke, a small viking with a longish name stood up to his ankles in snow. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, had been feeling slightly sick ever since he woke up that morning. Ten boys, including Hiccup, were hoping to become full members of the tribe by passing the dragon initiation program. They were standing on a bleak little beach at the bleakest spot on the whole bleak island. A heavy snow was falling. Pay attention, screamed Gobber the Belch, the, soldiers, the soldier in charge of teaching initiations. 
This will be your first military operation, and Hiccup will be commanding the team. Oh, not Hiccup, groaned Dog's Breath, the Durr Brain, and most of the other boys. You can't put Hiccup in charge, sir. He's useless. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock the Third. The. Oh, here's Gobber the Belch. He's um, the idiot in charge of initiations, just so you know. The hope of the heir to the tribe of the Hool Harry Hooligans wiped his nose miserably on his sleeve. He sank a little bit deeper in the snow. Anyone would be better than Hiccup, sneered Snotface, Snotlout. Even Fishlegs would be better than Hiccup. Fishlegs had a squint that made him as blind as a jellyfish and a an allergy to reptiles. Silence! roared Gobber the Belch. The next boy to speak has limpets for lunch for the next three weeks. There was absolute silence immediately. Limpets are a bit like worms and a bit like snot and a lot less tasty than either. Hiccup will be in charge. Well, let me say this better. Hiccup will be in charge and that is an order, screamed Gobber, who didn't notice Quite, um, did, ugh, who didn't do noises quieter than screaming. He was seven foot, he was a seven foot giant with a mad glint in one, with his one working eye and a beard like exploding fireworks. Despite the freezing cold, he was wearing hairy shorts and a teeny weeny deer skin vest that showed off his lobster red skin and bulging muscles. He was holding a flaming torch in one gigantic fist. Hiccup will be leading you, although he is admittedly completely useless, because Hiccup is the son of the chief, and that is the way things go with us Vikings. Where do you think you are? The Republic of Rome? Anyway, that is the least of your problems today. You are here to prove yourself as a Viking hero, and it is an ancient tradition of the hooligan tribe that you should gobber what you should. And then this is where Gobber paused dramatically. First catch your dragon! Ooh, suffering scallops, thought Hiccups. Our dragons are what set us apart. Oh. Our dragons are what set us apart. Let me say that correctly. <laughs> Bellowed Gobber. Lesser humans train hawks to hunt for them, horses to carry them. It is not only the Viking heroes who dare to tame the wildest, most dangerous creatures on earth. Gobber spot, spat solemnly into the snow. There are three parts to the dragon initiation test. The first and most dangerous part of the test is of your courage and skill at burglary. If you wish to enter the Harry Hoogland tribe, you must first catch your dragon. And that is why, continued Gobber at full volume, that is why I have brought you to the scenic spot. Take a look at Wild Dragon Cliff itself. The ten boys tipped their heads backward. The cliff loomed dizzyingly high above them black and sinister. In summer, you could barely even see the cliffs as dragons of all shapes and sizes swarmed over it, snapping and biting and sending up a cacophony of noises that could be heard all over Burke. But in winter, the dragons were hibernating, and the cliff, cliff fell silent except for the ominous low rumble of their snores. Hiccup could feel the vibrations through his sandals. Now, said Gobber, do you notice those four caves about halfway up the cliff, grouped roughly in the shape of a skull? The boys nodded. Inside the caves, that would be the right eye of the skull, is the dragon nursery, where there are, at this very moment... Three thousand young dragons having their last few weeks of winter sleep. Ooh, muttered the boys excitedly.
we will continue on the next episode.